Hey everyone, it's Asha. Welcome to or welcome back to Reading with Asha. For today's video, I'm going to do a little bit of a March reading wrap up and some of the books that I hope to read for my April TBR. I did not read a ton of books in March, so I just thought I would combine the two videos. And I know that this is a little bit late, but yeah, we're just going to get right into it. I read four books, I think, in March, which I usually like to read a lot more, but I have so much stuff going on with school and my major is English literature, so I have to read a lot for school and I get a little bit burnt out on it. Not that I don't like reading or anything like that anymore. I love to read. I just have to read so much for school that I haven't like made as much time for personal reading. But this month, I've already read two books, I think, and we're only a couple days into April. So hopefully, I'll read a lot more this month and a lot more personal reading. And then next month, I'm done with school and it's summertime. So I will have so many more good book recommendations and reading recommendations that are probably books that you've heard a little bit more about but we're gonna talk about the books that I read this month so first of all I started off the month with Carrie Soto is back by Taylor Jenkins Reid you've probably heard of this book somewhere I feel like a lot of the booktubers are reading it recently this book I think I got at the beginning of the month or last month I read this right at the beginning of the month or I finished it at the beginning of the month and I really love this book I actually finished it on an airplane and this is about Carrie Soto it's actually a tennis story and it's literary fiction it's super easy to read Taylor Jenkins Reid is one of my favorite authors because her writing is just so easy and so nice to read so yeah this is about a tennis player her name is Carrie Soto she's kind of um considered more of a bitch character I guess you could say she's really not but a lot of people say that because she's just very determined and she cares a lot about winning and that type of thing which a lot of male tennis players are the exact same way but nobody says that about them which they talk about in this book which I really liked and it's basically just a story about her playing tennis because she's out of tennis for a really long time she's in retirement and then this younger woman is going to take her title and she does not want that to happen so she goes back into playing it and it's a whole really great story and she has so much amazing character development in this story and there's a subplot of romance it's very tiny but it's still really good and taylor jenkins reed is so good at writing romance even just in the little tidbits she gives us so i really enjoyed this book I gave this four stars because i thought it was a really good book and i read it super fast but i just didn't think it hit the five star mark for me but i really really enjoyed this and would highly recommend it i don't even care about tennis that much but it's just such a good story and i feel like you'll probably want to play tennis after reading this because that's how I felt if I'm being completely honest next up I read a book for school I think I read this I think did I read this next I don't know this might be in the incorrect order but it doesn't really matter because nobody is gonna know except for me so anyways the next book I read is why be happy when you could be normal this is by Jeanette Winterson and I read this for my English world literature and cultures class and this is a memoir by Jeanette Winterson it highlights her life growing up as a lesbian woman I believe she's lesbian and her mom is super religious and she just does not have a good relationship with her mom she's also adopted so that's a really big part of her character description and just how she grew up with her relationship with her mom and I believe she grew up in Manchester <laughs> I don't know if I'm saying that right and it feels wrong because I know I had to answer that question for a quiz. So I hope it was Manchester. I'm pretty sure that's where she was born. But I really, really like this book. It's a memoir, so I don't usually rate memoirs, but um, I think that her writing style is really, really good. A lot of people in my class had trouble reading it and understanding the kind of all over the place-ness of the story. But personally, I thought that it was, e it was easy for me to read. I feel like I have a similar thought process to her. So when it was all over the place, I kind of understood it. And I related to so much of this I had to annotate it for class but I have so many personal annotations in here as well I kept all of my class annotations blue and then my personal annotations were read but I seriously related to this book so much and I loved it and I love how it talks about the relationship between her and her mother obviously can't relate in the sense that I am a part of the LGBTQ plus community or that I'm adopted because I'm neither of those things but I still related to the character a lot and I really like the way that she wrote everything and also there's an audiobook for this if you guys want to listen to that it's really really good so I would highly recommend this and I know I don't think I've seen anyone on book to talk about it obviously I had to read this for school but if you're leaving for a good memoir if you like memoirs this is a very good one and it talks a lot about that kind of culture 
and yeah i loved it um the next book i read i actually read on my kindle on kindle unlimited and it was things we never got over by lucy wait is her name lucy lucy score it is lucy score I have heard a lot about this book and I kind of am very late to jumping on the Lucy score train or at least the things we never got over because this book came out I think a little while ago and pretty much everyone read it and then the second book just came out too and so yeah I don't think I read this at first because it's so long it's like 500 pages and it's a romance book and I don't think I've read any romance books that are that long that's just romance and not fantasy that I know of so I was a little hesitant but when I read this I really liked Lucy Scores writing and the story was actually pretty interesting to me. I think a lot of why I stayed away from it was because so many people said it was a single parent trope and that's not something that I'm usually inclined to read but this was a little bit different. So this is about Naomi and Knox and Naomi comes to this town. It's a very small town. It's called Knockamout. Not sure if I love that name but She's a twin sister. Her name's Trina, I'm pretty sure. She's crazy. She just causes a bunch of ruckus. She has a daughter, which Naomi finds out later. And Knox and Naomi meet pretty much right away. Knox is like super grumpy. Naomi is sunshine, so it's like grumpy sunshine trope. And Naomi is kind of forced into the role of having to take care of her niece, who she's never met. And everyone thinks that Naomi is Trina at first because they look the exact same because they're twins. I'm explaining this very bad but anyways Knox and Naomi meet and they both feel some type of way about each other but they don't say anything because again it's grumpy and sunshine so he's very like I don't like you and she's like okay I like him but I'm not gonna say anything because he definitely doesn't like me because this is how he acts and so yeah but it's a really really cute romance I like the character of Knox but I also feel like he was just at some point I don't know a little annoying or a little bit too mean but I'm not sure I think a lot of people liked it and I I did like the story. I won't say that I didn't like the story because I did. I read it. I felt like it was super easy to read. I wasn't waiting for it to be over or anything like that. I finished it even though it was super long. I feel like if I read it in the paperback form, I probably would have not liked it as much because it would take me, I just feel like having the big book, I would just, I would not like i would think this is so long for no reason but when i read it on my kindle i thought it was pretty easy quick read so i like that one and i would recommend it if you guys like grumpy sunshine especially this will probably be the perfect thing and there's a second book that has two of the side characters that i actually really like so i might read that soon and i know it's on kindle unlimited as well but I rated that a 3.5 stars, so I recommend it for sure. And I think a lot of people like it. I do get the hype. It wasn't my favorite, but I do get the hype. The last book that I read was for class. This is for my adolescent women and gender studies class, and it's Pink Think, Becoming a Woman in Many Uneasy Lessons. I'm not gonna rate this because it's a nonfiction book, but it has a whole lot of very interesting information of what it's like to grow up as a girl and all of the expectations that are placed on you. It also talks about there's one chapter that talks about the roles that are placed on men or blue think ideas so yeah i had to read this for my class if you're interested in women and gender studies or any feminist type of books you would probably really like this and i thought it was a really good book there's lots of pictures and that type of thing that shows like real life examples of advertisements and whatnot that were shown to younger girls and there's a lot of very surprising, actually gross information about how things used to be. Well, obviously a lot of these ideas are not as widely accepted now, at least socially, like they wouldn't put stuff like that out, but a lot of the ideas are still the same, if you ask me. So anyways, I know I'm talking super fast, but as far as my April TBR goes, I will tell you two of the books that I already read. I'm not gonna tell you like a description of them, but these were on my April TBR. Was the first book that I read was called The Book of Unknown Americans. Not gonna say anything about it now. And then the second book was If He Had Been With Me, which is a really popular book on booktube right now. I think because Sarah Caroli loved it. So that was on my April TBR. And then I have this. This bad boy right here, which is the first book in the Throne of Glass series, depending on the order that you read it in. But majority of the people said to read this first, so that's what I'm gonna do. And I don't know, I'm just gonna go along with it. I literally have no idea what it's about. I didn't know any of 
Sarah J Mass's book synopsis or anything about them before I read them and I ended up liking them all so I'm just gonna go into this blind and I've seen Destiny Sidwell reading this recently and all of her reading vlogs she's been reading the whole series and it's made me want to read it so much I got the series for Christmas and I was like I just need to pick it up I feel the urge now so why not do it because sometimes it's hard to get the urge to read a huge series like this so finally did and I'm gonna be taking advantage of it this month hopefully and hopefully after I read this I'll run to read the next one and the next one then the next one but I don't think I'm gonna read them all like directly after each other I did that for Akatar and I got I loved Akatar but I got really kind of burnt out on fantasy books for a really long time so I'm gonna you know mix it up put some books in between hopefully but yeah I really want to read this and I have the old covers personally I like the old covers better I know a lot of people have the new ones I kind of just like the older ones you know in my opinion, I, I just like the way that these look. They just look so YA fantasy and it makes me feel kind of nostalgic. So that's one of the big ones I wanna read. I also would really like to read another Taylor Jenkins read book. I kind of would like to read one by her like every month because I love her books. They're so easy to read. So let me know if you have any other ideas on what I should pick up by her next. Obviously, I just told you I read Carrie Soto is back. I've read Daisy Jones and the Six, Evelyn Hugo, and I've also read Malibu Rising. And one true love so I definitely want to read maybe in another life I asked you guys when I went book shopping like a month ago if I should get this or forever interrupted and you guys all chose this so I kind of want to get to this this month a little romance book to throw in there because I love a good romance book I'll probably read something on my Kindle too not sure what I want to read yet but we'll see and then an easy one I wanted to read is Heartstopper which this is a graphic novel and I feel like this would just be nice to throw in in between books that I want to read for school and yeah just seeing it's pretty self-explanatory this is the second book and I already read the first one a couple months ago I think whoops oh <laughs> my books are falling but anyways, the last book that I really want to read this month is something that I actually have to read for class, but it's been on my TBR forever, and that is Crying in H Mart. I don't have the physical copy right now with me. It's in the other room, but I'm really excited to read this. It's a memoir, and I know it talks a lot about Korean food. I just know that this book is going to make me very hungry, and I'm very excited for it, and I'm sorry I'm talking so fast. So, sorry I just ran through that super fast. There's probably some other books that I'll end up reading this month, I hope, and I hope I get to all of these, but let me know in the comments down below what you are. Are looking forward to reading this month or this summer because I know we're getting into warmer months in those bee trees so I'm really excited about it but I love you all so much and I will see you in my next video thank you so much for your support and I will see you soon bye guys